Exiles. As you can see, we've made some big improvements. This character is coming together in ways I wasn't uh, I wasn't prepared for. I, I had high hopes for it, but this is turning out fantastic. I like this character a lot. Let's get into some of the changes. What are we working with now? How's the character going? So, to start things off with, one of the big changes we made was a plus two Legion cooldown. I want to go over this specifically because it has a few important changes. One is our cooldown is a bit slower. Instead of a half a second cooldown, it's a 0.63 second cooldown. It's the difference in taking about three seconds to get six clones and about taking 3.6 seconds to get six clones. It is technically a DPS loss if you're spamming the clones. That being said, we're able to do Cyclone for damage anyways outside of that, so it's not as big of a loss. And on top of that, there's some important differences. And one thing I want to note, one of the base, biggest rub points with Frozen Legion is if you have an enemy against a wall, you'll notice your clones have limited, basically, spawn capabilities because the wall limits where they can spawn. With plus eight, the basically the locations it's going to plant your clones is basically there's two more locations that evenly space them and it means if you're up against a wall you're more likely to be able to spawn more in you'll notice on some of these i had close to like four here it's not like it's not like a set in stone science but the point is there's going to be occasions where five go there versus if i have this on i get three there's scenarios where you're going to be up against the wall bosses try to hide against the wall and the difference in having five clones spawn versus something like potentially four or even five spawn with the eight clones it makes a difference it's just a little bit of a quality of life difference i'm not no, i'm not sure if i'm highlighting it properly but point is there is some issues when you get up against a wall and this makes it a little bit more consistent for an additional clone or two spawning on a regular basis not only that but our one shot threshold the amount of damage we can deal in one hit goes way up right it goes up by 33 percent more because you can do eight clones instead of just six and you're hitting harder you'll you know listen that's phoenix clip he basically dodged out of a few of those hits i think because i didn't really time it right or whatever and that's fine but i still got to go and then two tap him and it felt really really freaking good to be honest um big improvements we made is we got triple curse into the build this is curses are curses are king now as far as i'm concerned a mandatory best in slot anoint is whispers of doom and there's nothing that competes with it if you have something that represents 30 pen on one node that that's just crazy amounts of damage you have to have a life-changing build defining notable to beat whispers of doom so we get plus one curse here and then our chest piece we get plus one curse here luckily a plus one curse chest piece is really easy to craft it's pretty simple you're basically awaken or being attack crit with frenzy charge awaken orb that together and then you do a suffixes can't be changed reforge caster it ends up only being like a three divine cost to make a chest just like this one I have here. You'll see we have our suffix is stun and block recovery. Or no, our suffix is, it's something that's garbage. What is it? Yeah, it's stun and block recovery. It's completely useless. Basically, the only way this craft breaks is if it hits six mods, you have to try to a null off a prefix to do the suffixes can't be changed reforge caster. But ultimately, this represents a plus curse. This represents a plus curse. And all of a sudden, between elemental weakness, plus a, on a, a flammability, plus assassin's mark, we're looking at a monster that's taking minus 80 res and 1.5 base crit and crit multi it's a ton of power and that's something i didn't really have in the build and it's really easy to proc it now because all we have is focus mod 
This means it's an instant cast when I get to a big boss and I want to deal damage. I press focus mod and then I do this. It instantly casts all the curse and we go right in for the one shot. Real clean, real easy, and I'm not stuck casting a curse really slowly with my pathetic cast speed. I'm only stuck slowly casting for a frozen, religion, frozen legion and that's it. Other improvements we made to the build is Yoke of Suffering. This is a big one. Basically, it means we can now shock enemies, and we inflict about four ailments. We get Brittle, we get Chill, we get Shock, and we get Ignite. So this amulet is roughly worth enemies take 70% increased damage. If we walk over an enemy, Brittle is there. If we hit an enemy, we can Chill because we have the All Damage Can Chill mod, even though we are purely Fire at this point. We've swapped to Avatar of Fire. The Vision is coming through for the plan I had for this character as Chieftain. And then we get Ignite from being Fire-based, and then Shock because Elemental Damage Can Shock from Yoko Suffering. This amulet is cheap. It's like 510C, not too bad. Throw it in the build, and it's massive damage. Also, another thing we changed is we started to get accuracy on our gear between our helmet our, ri our ring here and our gloves here this is really important make sure you're getting above 4k accuracy to get the 100 percent crit uh hit chance if you don't accuracy is checked twice for critting and it can really break your crit builds not only that we also went for divine flash now this you don't necessarily have to do i ended up solely doing this because well i'll show you why i've been doing some sanctum i've been enjoying it um, if I go over to my Relic Locker, it's not going to let me pull up my Active Sanctum because I just reset it, I guess. Um, but point is, I got a uh, Sanctify Relic that is plus three max Chaos Rise. I say, that's great for that's great for a um, basically Divine Flush build. The thing is, though, if you wanted to go Divine Flush like I am here, it'd be pretty easy to get a plus max Chaos Rise here and here and even here potentially. So you could kind of match a similar max Chaos Rise and this could still be a, a, a good spec for you if you want to go Divine Flush. I think it's probably worth it even without the extra max res because it helps us deal with elemental damage, one of our weaknesses to the build, as well as giving us a extra good strength against chaos damage which chaos damage seem to be freaking everywhere in the high tier maps as far as i can tell a lot of the map bosses in the higher tiers are like all chaos monsters so i uh i've been enjoying the swap there uh anything too crazy i changed out not really mainly just swapping to avatar of fire and then this is the tree we have currently i'm gonna continue to fine tune this as we go we're just a level 92 character and uh yeah, that's the update to what we did and changes of the character. I'm trying to think what we have in terms of... Well, we eventually want to get a 6 link for our clear skill. Sometimes we don't one-shot packs, and that is solely going to be fixed if we just get a 6 link for our shockwave totem. We'll then have to drop maybe this duration support. This isn't really good at giving us much. I'll probably swap frost link down to here and get a 6 link damage there. Um, but yeah, we our links are still mostly just un... Uh, unawakened gems but we did invest we did splurge a little bit and got divergent pulverized this is a big improvement for the build because it's about 20 percent more damage or roughly more like 16 17 percent more damage but honestly get divergent pulverized that's fantastic and uh oh i almost forgot we swapped determination for hatred i decided you know what i have six endurance charges i have close to like 30% fizz taken as I have a little bit of armor with our armor up with our granite flask up or whatever we have 9k armor okay it's not great but point is I decided to go hatred I want to have big damage and hatred gets us big damage so I swapped that in and then act and then precision plus war banner for accuracy and Herald of Ash before basically making the skill look cool while mapping. That's pretty much what Herald of Ash does. Gives a little bit extra clear, makes it feel good. Now, let's do a showcase of the build. I'm getting tired, but I wanna give you guys a showcase. This is a 40%, no, 30% more Monster Life Chimera. Give you a little rundown of what it looks like while mapping and uh, talk you through what I'm doing. I've been trying to simplify the skill set of things of buttons I have to press. And right now, it is as simple as Enduring Cries on left click. This will always mean our Endurance Charges are uh, up. You'll notice without Endurance Charges, our resident aren't capped. But effectively, with this on left click, we're never going below Endurance Charge cap. And we'll always have the over cap on res there. And then, simply put, we just cyclone around. And then uh, um, cross blink between enemies. And then whenever you see a tankier rare, just right click and uh, tankier rare goes bye-bye. And then if you see a really tanky rare, if you're feeling it, you can press focus and then guarantee that tanky rare is gone. Because if that tanky rare gets the triple curse on Tandra, he's not going to survive. There's no freaking way. We pretty consistently hit for 
I don't know how much this, this build deals at this point for how much like a one shot hit it does, but it, it, it hits hard. That's all I gotta say. It hits it hits quite hard. I have to confirm my relics, whatever, confirm. And then uh, I can't save a room, and then I'm just gonna walk out. But oh, here's my sanctified relic plus three max cast rise. All right, get me out of here. Get me out of here. As I was saying, um, we hit really hard at this point. We are doing basically pretty consistently 50% shocks on basically. I don't know if we'll do it on Ubers or not. I, we have to get to Ubers. I'm not there yet. I literally am just starting to get to do some endgame guardians. I just started getting some maps for them. So I figured I could showcase what the character looks like on that stuff now that I'm there. Um, and yeah, it's going pretty well. Just get to Camaro. I will say this as for investment and what you should start the build on. If you want to start this character, I would say don't start it unless you got the, the mace. A lot of people ask me what, what's the minimum I would start this build on. I'd say Moriarty. Moriarty plus, you know, some a few fractured rares that you chuck a couple essences on. But really, you want Moriarty. It just makes such a nice difference in terms of uh, single target and stuff. I'm not gonna worry about. I'm just gonna show you the Chimera boss fight, and then we can. Uh... So you'll see, he basically dodged everything there because he did uh, his dash through, and he basically dodged my clone attack. But it doesn't matter. You get the clones back pretty fast, and you get to use them again. So it's not a big deal, really. It happens from time to time. I was gonna say, yeah, as for budget investment, um, for, just for starting to build Moroyerky, as for what my character's invested at this point, I think I'm roughly around 15 divines of investment is what we've put into this character. I wanna say something like that. No, I didn't curse him. Is that enough to one shot him? Okay. I was thinking if I didn't curse him, I wasn't sure we were going to skip him to the next phase, but I guess we were able to because I, I used my focus on the uh, random ad. So I was kind of curious if if we still got a full on shot, if it would uh, phase him or not. Obviously, if we get a six link for our shockwave, it'll be a lot more effective at basically dealing with the small ads and whatnot and whatnot we have to deal with, but. Yeah, it's fine hitting him with shockwave every now and then. And he dodged it. Okay, phase. For some reason, I thought that was going to be the last phase, but I just have been not counting correctly. I guess Camaro isn't like a really good boss fight to show this on because Camaro has so many like forced phases, but point is we all we really care about is occasionally we'll drop a totem if we feel like it and then on top of that if we see an enemy that we say hey we want to put a curse on we focus for it and that's when we do the big damage and then other than that it's just basically phase run around plus frost blink now i'm not 100 percent sure about this it might be we have to frost blink beforehand or frost blink right after trying to cast it but i'm pretty sure we can get a multiplier in damage for frost blink if we um I don't know. It's either if we not frost blink. I'm saying phase run. Phase run has a buff that gives more physical damage. I'm not sure if we use it before we cast if it'll give the bonus, or if we use it after we cast before they hit if it'll give the bonus. I'm not sure. But point is, there's a potential that if we press this, maybe that also helps with our one shot potential. I don't really know. I'm getting really tired. It's late. I need to go to bed. I stayed up too late trying to get this set up for a video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. As always, thanks for watching. Take care, exiles.